Hi, we are Group A, B, and uh, we are now introduced ourselves. Yeah, I'm Laura. I'm Matt. I'm Emma. I'm Sean. Ollie. And I'm Stephen. Our question was to find the concentrated t uh, force at this corner where x1 and x2 were zero on a square plate with a hydrostatic force acting on it with P at the bottom edge. We can write the distributed load as a function just of x2 as in x1 it's possible. We also know that distributed loads can be written as a double Fourier series, which is given here. So basically, this equals where we can determine the uh, coefficient Qm using a double integral. Right, so now we want to find the coefficient of the double Fourier series, which we've called Qm, um, and this is expressed as double integral of this, um, and so we start off by uh, taking out the constants and we integrate with respect to x1 first, and we can take that outside the bracket, uh, outside the integral, so we've only got x2s, and then we find what this is, and, um, and then we need to find, we need to integrate by parts, so we choose our f of x to be x2, f dash 1, g dash the sine term, and uh, we uh, integrate that, and so normal integration by parts, everyone's done it. So we find uh, an expression for QMN, and we get this bit, so we integrate that, and we find this term goes to zero because we've got, when we uh, put in A and naught, we get a sine N pi, which for N being a, um, an integer, will always make this term go to zero, and sine of naught is also naught. So we end up uh, coming down to here, and this is our QN N term. And I'm pretty sure QMN goes into another expression somewhere. I'll help you, Oliver. I think you'll find that QMN goes into WMN, and I'll show you how right now. <laughs> OK, so you quote this standard result here, which gives you WMN in terms of QMN and it's over d pi to the 4 brackets m squared over a squared plus n squared over a squared. So you substitute in qmn, which you just found in the last step, and this gives you this lovely equation straight over here. Now, this wmn is actually the coefficient for this double Fourier series here, which will give us the displacement function. So that tells us how much the plate is displaced at any position, x1 and x2. So now, just substituting in this wmn into here, and then grouping all the constants outside, we're left with this double summation here, which gives us our W function. Uh, but I've got W, but how do I find the corner forces? I need to know the corner forces. God, I'm so bad at the structural mechanics. Well, Stephen, it is using the twisting moment as m12 is equal to the flexor rigidity times 1 minus the Poisson's ratio with times the derivative of w with respect to x1 and x2. This has been derived in the lecture notes. However, we can see there then that the um, twisting moment on the corner is acting on both sides and m12 is equal to m21. Therefore, the, result, the corner resistance is, is going to be equal to 2m12. Okay, now we are going to find the m12, and uh, before we get the equation of the w, here is the equation, and then we get the not derivatives the W to here and uh, simplify it as this. Then because here the corner corner place is equal to two M one two so we just use this equation and uh, substitute the this into this and two uh, M one two is equal to here.
So here's the equation that uh, Sean has just shown us. Uh, and to simplify it, we can uh, work out the numbers for this sum. However, we can also see within the sum is a, a cos m pi minus 1, which, whenever m is even, will give us the summation of 0. So we ignore all even values of m and sum up until we get to negligible values all the way. This sums to 0 0.451. When putting that back into the equation for the summation and timesing it through with the 8 and the over pi 4, gives us this final solution for the value of the force in the corner. Thanks for watching and Merry Christmas.